Next question is from Health Coach Liz. NASM teaches flexibility training before strength. You guys have said you train your clients for strength first, so now I'm confused. Okay, so I think I know what they're asking here. Okay, so static stretching before you work out and lift weights, usually a bad idea, and here's why. we got to look at the details. When you hold a muscle in a static stretch, and a static stretch is like I go down to touch my toes and I hold that stretch for 30 seconds, or um, I'm on the floor and I stretch my quad and I just hold it in that position for 30 seconds. Those are static stretches, the old school PE stretches that your teachers would have you do. Does NASM teach that? Well, they, stability is their first. So I was going to say, is this person correct here before we start it, defending? It, but I think I know why they say this. I think they're a little confused, so I'll, I'll get they're, there. They're addressing, yeah, the the imbalances first. So yes, yeah. thank you, Justin. Exactly. Yeah. So, so look at the details. Again, so you're holding a stretch for a long period of time. What that does is it tells the central nervous system to weaken its signal to that muscle. So if I hold my pec in a static stretch for 30 seconds or 60 seconds. And this is why you actually get longer ranges of motion. If you're holding a stretch for 30 seconds, you notice it starts to get deeper and deeper. Your CNS turns off essentially a little bit for that muscle. So you lose connection. Now, why is that not good for strength training? Well, you don't want to go into a strength training workout with your muscles partially turned off. That can cause problems, can cause instability, and can cause injury. However, there are times when this may be appropriate. This may be appropriate when antagonistic muscles may be getting in the way of proper form. So in right. layman's terms, let's say I'm doing a row, which in, a, in the row I want to bring my shoulders back and I want to squeeze that mid-back area, but my chest is just so tight mm -hmm. that I can't get proper form. It's just getting in the way, so it's hard for me to act. I'm already weak in my mid-back, but now i got these tight pec muscles pulling me forward. Mm -hmm. What can I do? If I static stretch my chest before I do the rows, my CNS weakens the signal to my chest, allowing it now to kind of get out of the way a little bit so I have better form. This is what you're seeing in NASM. They're teaching you to static stretch uh, muscles that may be tight that are preventing. To get into optimal posture. That's well, it. And a yeah. Be yeah, better, I don't even like using static stretch here. It's corrective stretching. Yeah. Yes. So, and, th th and that's the difference, right? They're both static holds, right? They both But they're fall, doing it correctively. But they're doing it for corrective purposes. So you're in a better position when you go to exercise, which is what we, we yeah. do with mobility, right? So when you our MAPS Prime, this is what MAPS Prime is all about. So in a perfect world, you're not just running anabolic by itself or performance by itself or aesthetic by itself. You also have prime to complement it and you take yourself through the assessment. So in a perfect world, you go through the assessment in prime. And if you haven't followed the webinar that Justin did, it's free. You could watch it. I highly recommend it to everybody, especially if you don't have the program. What's the URL for that, Doug? Is it prime? Mapsprimewebinar.com. Mapsprimewebinar.com. So the idea is that you go through that, you assess yourself. During that assessment, it's going to help point out the areas that you need to work on corrective stretching. Mm -hmm. And then your, your idea is to do those movements, those priming movements that we tell you to do in Maps Prime based off of how you pass or fail your assessment that then becomes your staple corrective stretches you do before you go into training. We talk about priming and mobility because it's more of an active stretch, I, and NSM still uses kind of the older model of we static. We evolved past that, and that was where we all kind of started out. But really, like mobility training is strength training. So th th that's the difference in terms of like, you know, gaining access to different ranges, but you have strength in those ranges. So it's not just about uh, at attaining this this passive range of motion, which you get from static stretching, which theoretically you can open up uh, the ability for you to then uh, get into better posture, which is going to perform better movements. This actually, you know, takes you through that process of teaching your body how to acquire and, and recruit, uh, you know, strength within each uh, angle of that range of motion. And so that's why I've actually preferred uh, mobility training uh, and I'm completely abandoned most um, uh, most static stretching and, and really static stretching for me, like uh, if I use it at all, would be at the end of my workout. Dude, p p priming is, a, is it's, you can't even compare pair proper priming to the old ways of of corrective you know stretching before you work there's no comparison i in, in fact I, we just got tagged in the forum by somebody who they heard they've listened to us talk about on the podcast all the time didn't really buy into it finally did a real priming session oh yes and they're like to and they're, this is their quote totally has changed my perspective on priming and i'm going to prioritize it 
uh, each time I work out because they noticed just way more connected to the workout. It's a, just a, a much better way of getting your body ready for your workout. Um, and that webinar that he did is free, by the way. It's mapsprimewebinar.com. Go on there. Just do me a favor. Try it out. Try it out. It doesn't cost anything. He literally teaches you how to do it. And then go do a little workout and see how you feel. I'm really curious with the, where this person is getting the flexibility. Because it's been so long since I've looked at NASM, right? So I pulled up. I know their OPT model, right? So I pulled mm -hmm. up their, their five-step OPT model. And they, they don't start in flexibility. It's phase one for them is stabilization, endurance. Stabilization, yeah. yeah, it's stabilization, endurance. Then it goes into strength, endurance. Then it goes into hypertrophy. And then it goes into maximal strength. Then it goes into power. Right. The only way the only way I, I think it, that they, they would they talk corrective. about it is yeah. what we said. Yeah. Right, right. That's the only way I can Im imagine that they would even recommend that because, I mean. Anyway. Yeah, and that's through their squat assessment where they, yeah, they'll, they'll recommend certain corrective stretches like you mentioned. Right. But that's that's literally it. Yeah, they, they want stability, which is strength training. They want to get uh, your, your, your joints fortified so that way you can build on top of that.